exclusive Black Talk Media. Streaming online at wordradio.com and the Word Radio app. The views and opinions expressed by the guests, listeners, and hosts of any program on Word Radio do not necessarily reflect those of the ownership, management, or advertisers of this station. I'm, I'm simply saying that life finds a way. write something on the board. Let's spell it. First letter. L. O. G. What's that? What? It's time. It's time to have real, honest, open, difficult, and inspiring conversations. It's time for Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Hello, hello, hello. Hey there, family. Hello and welcome to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. That's wurdradio.com. I am your host, Carol Riddick, and you know, I am joined by the one and only Miss Kayla J. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Happy Monday and happy Juneteenth to you as well. It's Juneteenth, y'all. Ooh, you know, I'm going to ask, you already know, you already know that I'm going to ask you um, for the fellas, for the dads, the daddies, the fathers, how was your father's day? Do tell, do tell. I want to know all about it. I want to know everything that took place. Also, family, did you do anything over the weekend to celebrate Juneteenth? Did you do anything today on Juneteenth, uh, the actual holiday, to celebrate or to recognize Juneteenth? I am so curious to know. I know you, you all remember last week I was asking you know, what you were planning to do. Some of you did tell me some of uh, the traditions that you've all started and have begun. So I'm, I'm interested in knowing what the rest of you did. What, what are you doing? What did you do? What are you doing today? I know you're talking, you, you know, you're with me right now. You're hanging out with me right now. But what did you do earlier today? And what did you do this past weekend? Also, did you attend our message in the music event? I want to know if you did. I want to know all about that too. The time that you had, I want to know everything. I tell you that all the time, don't I? Don't I? Don't I? <laughs> I do want to say uh, thank you to the family members that I saw over the weekend, all of those of you with whom I communicated. If you will recall, um, I shared with you last week that I would be in Richmond. I was in Richmond, Virginia on Friday with Will Downing, and I was at um, Mercer County Park in New Jersey with Jeff Bradshaw on Saturday performing in their Juneteenth celebration. I had an awesome weekend just seeing all of you. I mean, I really did. I really did. Oh, I also... Family, I also visited the Harriet Tubman Museum in Cape May yesterday. Um, I was telling you, you know, I wanted to do something, something different, something, you know, and I was looking for something to do. I'm always searching for knowledge, as you know, and uh, the museum, it just did not disappoint. You hear me? It was, it was truly 
uh, it was a great visit, but it was truly an emotional one. I will say that too. But I, I do want to say thank you to my cousins who took me, uh, Greg and Crystal Henderson. They actually took me to the Harriet Tubman Museum. As a matter of fact, I, you know what? I do have a picture that I want to share with you all. For those that can see, I took a photo of the museum. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, and it was a wonderful, wonderful trip, like I said. So I want to know what you did. I want to know all about what you did. Um, you know what I like to do before we get started? I like to check in. And I see that our brother Nasir is checking in. Hi there, brother Nasir. Nasir Butler writes, good evening, Sister Carol and Kayla J and guest. Uh, peace and blessings. He writes, Father's Day was wonderful, but Father's Day is every day. I love that. I love, love, love that. You wrote that last week and I loved it when you wrote it. Um, and you are absolutely right. You are so right because uh, while my father is up there in heaven celebrating, I do talk to him all the time, every day because I miss him. So it's the Pee Wee Marshall. Y'all, y'all know I talk about my poppy. <laughs> I love my poppy and my mother, but I love my poppy. That was my road dog. He was my road dog. So those of you who are on our socials, let us know that you're there. Let me know what you did over the weekend. I want to know um, what you did to celebrate Father's Day. Those of you who are fathers or in playing the role of father, you know, there are a lot of father figures, you two who celebrated Father's Day. I want to know all of that. And what did you do for Juneteenth? I want to know. Did you celebrate? Did you, what did you do? What did you do? Nasir, what did you do? Did you do anything different today? or over the weekend. Um, for those of you who want to call, you can do that too. And you can do that by dialing 215-634-8065, or you can call me toll free at 1-866-361-0900. To our family members who are uh, listening and uh, are not watching, hey there. Hey, that's to you too. Um, you know, I want to know what you did. You know, I do. You know, I do. And as always, I do feel the love that you always share. It is always, always greatly appreciated. And to our family members whose lights are shining just a little dimly today. Now, you know, I did not forget about you. You know, I did not. I'm sending you love and hugs. Extra, extra, extra love and hugs on today, on Juneteenth, okay? You hear me, I keep saying it, I keep saying it because I really want to know what you did. Um, I want to know what's going on, what's going on? <laughs> For those of you who are celebrating a birthday today, happy birthday to you, uh, or if it was over the weekend, happy birthday to you. I love it, and I'm, I've told you before, family, if you want me to recognize any of our family members on the air, uh, tell me, just let me know. You can do that by sending me an email. You can shoot me an email at loveandlife at wordradio.com. That's loveandlife at wurdradio.com. Say, yeah, I got a family member that I want you to show some love to, and I will gladly do so. Okay. So I want to talk to you about a few things. I want to talk to you about a few things. You already know, we haven't talked about what's going on in a minute, in a minute. Uh, oh, I'm looking at my socials and I see her. I said, he chilled out with the grandkids eating taco salad. You and that taco salad. And I see her, that taco salad must be everything. Okay. I mean, I love a good taco salad. I haven't had one in a good minute. But Nasir writes that he had taco salad with the grandkids. I love that. Love that. <laughs> and so uh, let's go to our uh, our headlines, rather. Let's go to our headlines. I want to talk about some things. So family, let's get ready to have some conversations. Okay. The first of which, I want to talk about all of the Juneteenth celebrations. You know I do. You know that I do. Um, the African American Museum celebrated Juneteenth with a block party. Did anyone attend? Were you aware? I want to know. I want to know all about it. The article reads, uh, the African American Museum in Philadelphia marked Juneteenth with a day of fun-filled family-friendly events, including a Juneteenth block party uh, with live music, games, food trucks, local vendors, and uh, DJ Spinderella was the guest. 
So I want to know who attended. I want to know, you know, I want to know everything. You know, I do. You know, I do. Um, I believe one of our family members is on the phone line. So I won't make you wait too long because I want to know what you did. I want to talk with you. Are you still there by any chance? Yes. Hello. How you doing, Cal? Hi, Ron. How are you? Oh, my cup running over. First of all, I just want to say to the Almighty God, all Father, we are in heaven for giving us every person, their father and their mother, but their father, as we celebrate this. I want to thank the Philadelphia Corporation for the agent. I'm hoping, it's my hope, on my birthday, that I might speak at the Philadelphia Corporation for the agent. Thank you, Almighty God, for letting me be a voice to be able to speak for our seniors in particular, Miss Betty, Miss Hughes, Miss Hughes, her son is taking care of her. Woman called me up on the phone to sing the old gospel hymn to me way up in age. Miss Betty, another 80 some years of age. Oh God, that's the gift when you give me somebody like that to be an inspiration to me and let me go to do the things that I have to do. With all the things that is going on in this world, and there are a lot of those going on, I just want to thank God for people like Miss Betty and Miss Hughes who comforts the comforter while well, you do, Miss Hughes, you, Miss Betty. And when we look back at our history, down through the years, those of us that still have life in our body, we have an obligation and a responsibility to speak for those who cannot speak for themselves while we can speak. And I say to all my people that have been through your institutions of indoctrination, speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. Because if you live long enough, you may be in a situation, hopefully, that you won't. That's that it will, someone will have to speak for you. I still say this. I see the sun peeking through the clouds because the Lord have given us hundreds and hundreds of going on before us and still hundreds in existence to make sure that we are participators in this, in this, in the country, in this country, the United States of America. I bear witness. I bear witness. We have our DNA in this country. If you are, if those that believe, whether you're Muslim or whoever you are, those that believe the believers, not organized religion, but have religion in your mentality. Mm. Someone else. When you help somebody else, it speaks 60 and come back. Hope you're doing well. Cal, hope all y'all are doing well. Let me just say this to you. Your program, and the other day, the lady that sent in for Solomon Jones, and I know many others have said it, but when y'all talked about your dad, and the lady talked about her dad, and that lady, that come that was going to uh, sit in for Solomon. She mm -hmm. talked about speaking up for the seniors. This is what education is about. Help them do their application for them if, without uh, treading on their family business. Some of them need help. Mm -hmm. So my cup running over. To Almighty God be the glory for WRD and all his creation of life. Thank you very much. Ron, thank you. Thank you so much. Family, as you know, Ron is is family. And uh, it's it's always a, a pleasure to talk with Ron. Ron always shares um, a positive message with us. There's always positivity in his message. I want to talk with you too. I want to hear from you. I want to know, um, what do you think about Juneteenth, about the holiday, about what, what do you think about it? I'm curious to know. I mean, I know that there are, I know I have a few friends that are um, well, they don't care one way or the other, but I'm curious to know how you feel about it, what you think about it. If you feel that the holiday is long overdue, if you feel, um, you know, we deserve more. Uh, I'm curious to know, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts about Juneteenth? Um, as we continue the articles I was sharing with you, the first of which was that the African American Museum um, celebrated Juneteenth with a block party. Curious to know if anyone attended um, and what you think about that. There's also another article that the largest Juneteenth parade in the country was held in West Philadelphia on Sunday. Did you know that? Did you attend? It reads, Philadelphia hosted the largest Juneteenth parade in the entire country on Sunday, both celebrating the holiday and offering resources to the community. 
Um, it reads that the parade went down 52nd Street starting at Parkside and ended at Larchwood and Malcolm X Park. Um, and there was also a festival with well over 200 vendors. I, I, you know, I want to say um, these past two weekends, and, and I'm so sorry, I was working and was not able to participate in, in either one of the events, but I really, really, really wish that I had I've been able to attend uh, Odun Day and the parade, the the parade that that took place. Um, I had some family members that attended, and they, I mean, they talked about it. They were texting me and and telling me about um, about the parade. Um, and of course, family members who always tell me about Odun Day, and then who told me about it this year. It it always feels like a wonderful celebration to me when I attend, when I go, and it it just I love celebrating us. Y'all know I love us. Y'all know, y'all hear me say it all the time, family. I love love and I love us. So every time we get to celebrate us, um, I am overjoyed. I am overjoyed. But I want, I'm curious to know what you think. I'm sharing with you what I think and how I feel. But I would love to know uh, what you think and how you feel. Um, I do have another article to share with you. I'm going to do this before our guest comes on this evening. Our guest, we're going to we're going to talk about we're going to talk about a lot. But I, uh, before we do so, like I said, I'm curious to know what you're thinking and how you're feeling. Um, the last article that I want to share with you, um, I definitely want to know what you think about this. When it reads, Philadelphia City Council considers forming a reparations task force. What does that mean? Uh, it reads, Philadelphia City Council will consider creating a reparations task force, a move that will make this the latest United States city to explore payments and other compensation to Black descendants of enslaved Africans. What do you think about that? What are your thoughts about that? Um, I'm curious to know. So once again, reach out to us. You can let me know on our socials. Or you can do so by calling. And the number to call is 215-634-8065. Or you can call me toll free at 1-866-361-0900. Once again, happy Juneteenth to you, family. Okay. Um, as, as we celebrate us, as we celebrate life as we celebrate a new beginning, as we celebrate new life. And uh, I'm curious to know what you did, how you celebrated. You know, I will say one thing. When I um, went to the, when I went to visit the Harriet Tubman Museum yesterday, uh, just reading the information. Uh, I, first of all, let me start here. I tell you all the time that I'm always, always, always open to learning. And uh, I'm always searching for knowledge. And when I went to the museum yesterday, you know, there was a question that 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 just came to me. You know, we talk a lot about uh, the queen and the king and what have you of England. Um, I'm just curious to know, as it pertains to our history and the Europeans, um, uh, how we how we we always celebrate the king and the queen and 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 their lineage, and knowing you know the connection to uh, our history and and reading yesterday, it just made me think even more, um, just about how 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 educated and how uneducated some of us are about our history. I mean, I don't know everything. Now, let me say that I don't know everything. I'm always um, in, in search of knowledge and I want to know more. I want to do better. As you know, as you know, I tell you this all the time. Um, but I'm curious to know what you think and how you feel, because that's what we do here. You know, we share here. We share. That's what we do. I'm going to take a moment to go to our socials before we take a short commercial break. Um, one of our family members is joining us, Miss Julie. Hi, Miss Julie. She writes, good evening, everyone. Over weekend of Jubilee, she listened to Navajo teachings, kindness to kindness act towards others the way the holy people act to you and she listened to the history of Agula from Africa to America circle unbroken 
Hmm. Oh, wow. She writes, sending love and condolences to our community and to the families of Dr. Edward W. Robinson, Jr. Miss Julie, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for contributing to the conversation as always, as always. Uh, what we're going to do right now, family, we're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we are going to bring our guest into the room so that we can have an even more depth in convert conversation about Juneteenth. Stay with us, family, because we will be right back. Bank of America is stepping up when it matters most. Last year, to expand our efforts to advance racial equality and economic opportunity, we committed $1.25 billion over five years. To date, we've put nearly $400 million to work. Together with our local partners, we're increasing affordable housing options, expanding small business support, and much more. At Bank of America, we call this a nice start. What would you like the power to do? Bank of America NA, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Let's face it, life looks a little different. During these times, we're doing our best to keep our minds and bodies strong. And getting a flu shot helps us stay healthy, so we don't miss out on what matters. Like having game night at home. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, can't do that while sick with the flu. Now imagine family movie night that your daughter can't live without. <coughs> well, that's ruined. And don't forget your uncle's socially distanced cookout. <coughs> See, that's why it's important to be at our strongest. Every year, millions of people in the U.S. get the flu. Especially now, no one has time to miss out on moments that matter. So get your flu shot. Find out more at GetMyFluShot.org. Brought to you by the AMA, CDC, and the Ad Council. The Word Radio Newsletter. Keeping you informed, engaged, and connected. Sign up by visiting wordradio.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page and type your email address under Connect With Us. You'll receive the latest information on Word Radio. Messages from our president and CEO, Sarah Lomax Reese. Exclusive articles and multimedia content and resources. Stay informed with the Word Radio Newsletter. You're listening to Love and Life with Carol Riddick on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Well, hello there, family. Hello, hello. Welcome back. You are tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. Happy Juneteenth to you. Happy Juneteenth. I want to take a moment just to recognize another one of our family members who is joining us on our socials, Miss Lily. Hi there, Miss Lily. She writes, good evening, Cara, Ka Cara, Carol, Kayla J, special guest and word family. Happy Juneteenth to all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. What I don't want to do uh, is keep you from our guest. I, uh, I well, you you all know every single time she comes, I tell you how much I love her and I tell her too. And I want to have this conversation with her. I'm so anxious. Uh, for those who are unaware, our guest that will be joining us in just a few moments is a graduate of Lincoln University, the very first uh, degree granting institution of higher education for blacks in the United States. She is a board certified African centered black psychologist and is the former president of the Delaware Valley Association of Black Psychologists. And she's here to talk with us about the history of Juneteenth, particularly some of the, the little known facts. Um, family, I invite you to say hello to Dr. Ayo, Dr. Ayo Maria Gooden. Hi there, Dr. Ayo. Dr. Gooden. Happy and healing Juneteenth to you and to the family. 
I love that. Happy and healing. See that? See that? In, in your greeting, I'm learning something. Happy and healing. I love that. You look so beautiful as always, but especially today. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's my goodness. It's such a joy to be here with you and with the WURD family. We love having you. We truly, truly do. I was um, asking our family members before you joined us, um, what, if anything, they did to celebrate and recognize Juneteenth. Um, I shared, I, I went to the Harriet Tubman Museum in Cape May. It was my very first visit. I am going back, but it was my very first visit. And it was um it was awesome. It, it 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 was an awesome visit, but it was also it was an emotional one. I was so emotional. I I broke down in there. Um mm. but but it felt good to be there as well. It felt good mm. to be recognized and it felt uh it feels good, I should say. It feels good to be recognized and it 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 really felt good just just reading and seeing uh history. Mm. Our history. Mm. But I digress. We are here talking with you today. And you know, I always learn something uh, from you. And I am anxious to have this conversation today. Well, thank you. Harriet Tubman is certainly uh, one of my favorite sheroes um, because of her strength, her courage. Uh, she certainly represents the best of us. And represents the kind of behavior that we all need to engage in. And that is helping our people to gain freedom because, you know, we're still not free, mm -hmm. but uh, certainly back when Harriet did it, her life was on the line every single day. And yet she courageously continued to help us to get out of enslavement so she's definitely one of my favorite people in the world. And yes. It's my hero. I mean, just amazing. Just I mean, you, like you said, every single day she risked her life. Yes. Every single day. Yes. Oh, what Literally. strength. Literally. Yes. So today we're going to talk about Juneteenth. And, you know, I always like to link it to black love relationships, because mm -hmm. there is a critical link uh, that we must be aware of. For, you know, most people know about Juneteenth as the day in which uh, actually blacks in Galveston, Texas, were informed that slavery had come to an end. Now, it was a couple of years after the Emancipation Proclamation of uh, 1863, but the proclamation came a year after Lincoln decided he was going to do it. But a lot of people are unaware of the fact that even though the Emancipation Proclamation was designed to free enslaved Blacks, that Lincoln did not free all the Blacks. It was only the Blacks that were held in the Confederate States. Those that were held by the Union were not given freedom. Mm -hmm. So we need to be very clear that sometimes history is presented in a way that makes us give credit to people for things that they didn't do or didn't intend to do. Mm -hmm. And the only reason he really freed Black people from enslavement was that the Union was losing the war and they needed help. And so the help that they came up with was Black people. Let the Black people get out here and fight for us mm -hmm. to get the things we want. And we did. And the, the war turned around because of black soldiers who fought and died. So we need to know the history and we need to know some people will say, but that was then that has nothing to do with me. And we couldn't be more wrong because our history tells us not just what happened in the past, but what's going on in the present, because we're still fighting for freedom. We don't have freedom now. Mm -hmm. And many times we think we do because perhaps we have a job or a degree or we live in a certain neighborhood or make a certain salary. But what we don't realize is that at the sign of a document, 
we can lose our rights to vote. We can be told that we're going back to enslavement. And so I frequently tell people we need to be informed about the importance of knowing the history and knowing the fact that we don't have automatic rights. We have to keep reinforcing that we're supposed to be free people. But when we see freedom, we need to understand that freedom means the choice to be better than, same as, or even worse than somebody else. And I personally want to be free to do whatever mm -hmm. versus saying equal, because equal implies that I can't be above. And I want to have the option to be above other people if I so desire. That means you may work 40 hours, but I can choose to work 60 hours mm -hmm. versus somebody saying, no, you can only do this. Or I may have a bachelor's degree and you may tell me I can't get more than a bachelor's degree, but I want a PhD or I'm making a salary, which we know about. And mm -hmm. I'm making 60,000 and they say, but you can't make more than 60,000 because nobody else is making 60,000. You can't do it. And I say, that is not what I want. I want the option, but there may be opportunities to even say, I don't feel like doing anything. And if that's what I want to do and I'm willing to take those consequences, then there are people who certainly should have the opportunity to do less. Like if you're retired, you may choose not to make more money than whatever you get from your social security or your retirement fund. And that's okay. And then there are others who want to make more and that's okay too. Mm. That's an interesting conversation. <laughs> you know, just the realization uh, uh, of that fact that at the, the just the signing of a document, could change our world completely. Absolutely. That alone, it, it well, just even thinking about it and processing it, it saddens me uh, because of what I see from, you know, our youth, our young adults, who who don't really they they've not processed that thought. They don't they don't really know. They don't really know, uh, like how close. <laughs> how close we are to mm -hmm. that day and time. Right. And we can see that with that particular governor from Florida, whose name I won't mm -hmm. mention. Mm -hmm. And he's running around telling us we're not allowed to teach black history or critical race theory. And the reason is very clear. The reason he doesn't want those things taught is the same reason that during enslavement, they did not want us to read. And they lied and said we weren't capable of reading, but they created a law that said if we were caught reading, we would be killed. And the reason is very clear, as I said, it's because if we really knew the truth about our history, mm -hmm. there would be nothing to stop us from returning to our original level of greatness. So imagine if people knew that our history did not start with enslavement, that Contrary to popular belief and lies, Black people who were kidnapped from Africa were not naked savages running around the jungle eating each other. Mm -hmm. We were African people dressed in clothing such as the outfit I have on tonight and other beautiful garments. We were scientists. We are the builders of the pyramids, not just in Kemet or Egypt, but the pyramids in China, in North America, in South America, Central America, Mexico. And I've climbed the ones, many of them in Mexico and a couple in Belize. So we need to know that they've lied to us about who we are and history can be shared with us when we go on those excursions to Mexico or to Belize or certainly to Africa as well, we start to see the lies that we're told because these structures are thousands of years old. And in fact, the oldest civilization that they've discovered thus far is over 200,000 years old in South Africa, and they were mining for gold there. Mm. So when we look at the history 
of Black people, it changes the dynamic. It's not that we were ignorant people, but, and sometimes this is gets us in trouble, we're very spiritual people. We believe in treating people the way we want to be treated. At least most of us did prior to the enslavement experience. And we've been very damaged and traumatized since then. Mm -hmm. And during the time before that experience, we welcomed people in, including the European, and taught the European about our trades, our knowledge, our experiences. They took that information and came back to steal from us, to kill us. And as they always do, anytime you deal with conquest, it is about killing the men and raping the women. Mm -hmm. And then your offspring become supporters of the invaders who have come in and destroyed your society, as we see here in the United States. So we need to be clear that knowing our history, knowing that we should all be celebrating Juneteenth instead of July the 4th, which most people celebrate and think it's their holiday. Mm -hmm. But the reality is 1776, Black people were enslaved by the Europeans and the Latinx, the Asian and the indigenous people were all being decimated by those same people who we praise and we've been taught to want to be like. But once you know their true history, You will want to be like your ancestors, the Africans, and not like the enslaver, the European. You know, I don't know if you heard the question I posed just before uh, you joined us. I was talking about having visited the museum and um, I was, of course, reading, you don't, you know, reading and it spoke to that fact, it spoke to that point about the Europeans, and it and it made me it just made me think about how so many of us celebrate the the king and the queen and the 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 of you know of England, and we we talk about Europeans and 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 it made me think like how so much of our lineage has been lost on us, how how we don't we don't talk about us how our kids, how, how we, well, even as adults, because there are some adults that even celebrate, you know, um, Europeans don't misunderstand me. I family, I want to be clear because I, I do not, I do not dislike or hate anyone. Um, my, what I'm saying right now is that, um, it is lost on me how we don't know more of our history and we don't, uh, we're not better educated, um, about our history. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what I, I want to, I want to be clear that mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying. Um, mm-hmm. That's what I want to say. Ms. Lily is sharing with us on our socials that we are a very spiritual pe- people. It's a part of our DNA. It is, it truly mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. It truly is. Mm-hmm. It truly is. Um, family, if you have just joined us, you are tuned in to love and life on WURD, uh, Progressive Black Talk Media, online and on air at wordradio.com. That's W-U-R-D radio.com. We are inviting you to join the conversation. We are talking with Dr. Ayo Maria Gooden, and we are talking about Juneteenth. She said, if, at, at her hello, at her greeting, she said, happy, uh, she said, happy Juneteenth. Happy and healing Juneteenth. I receive that. I receive that. So I share that with you. Happy and healing Juneteenth. Um, Please join us with your comments on our socials or call us. We'd love to talk with you. You can do that by dialing 215-634-8065 or you can call us toll free at 1-866-361-0900. Stay with us, those family. We're going to take just a short commercial break, but we will be right back. 
The Museum of the American Revolution invites you to celebrate Juneteenth at the museum. Join them June 17th through 19th to explore the continuing struggle for equality for all. Discover the story of James Fortson and his descendants and black founders, the Fortson family of Philadelphia, or book a Black Voices of the Revolution Gallery Highlights Tour. This 60-minute guided tour of the museum highlights a diverse set of stories, experiences, and objects related to people of African descent during the American Revolution. Information and tickets at AM Rev Museum. What is dedication? My daughter started making necklaces. She makes what we call affirmation fashion. I tell her every day that your black is beautiful. And if there's anything better than being beautiful, it's being smart. And if there's anything better than being smart, it's being kind. And reaffirming that every day is our method of making sure her chin never drops. That's dedication. Visit fatherhood.gov to hear more. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Word family, it's that time again. Our special early bird membership drive. Hi, I'm Sarah Lomax, Word President and CEO. We need your support now more than ever, especially this year when we're celebrating our 20th anniversary. For the last two decades, WURD has been the only place in Philly where our people can speak and be heard in their own voice every day, all day long. Your membership support has allowed us to expand our programming, deepen our community engagement, and provide culturally relevant information across all of our platforms on air, online, on social media, and through community outreach events. If you're not a Forward member yet, please join or renew today at the discounted rate of $75. Visit us at wordradio.com slash early bird or check us out in person when we'll be at the Juneteenth weekend celebrations on June 18th and 19th. For more information, go to wordradio.com slash early bird. Thanks so much. is love you're listening to love and life on wurd progressive black talk media i think i know what love is Well, hello there, family. Welcome back. You are tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. That's WURD radio.com. We are talking with Dr. Ayo Maria Gooden, and it's a Juneteenth conversation celebration and recognition. Um, as Dr. Gooden said, happy and healing Juneteenth to all of you. We're inviting you to the conversation as well. Before the break, we were talking about the Europeans, quite honestly. I was stating that I had visited um, the Harriet Tubman Museum over the weekend. And you know, you, you know, the interesting part of it is that I was aware but just reading it on the wall, I don't know why it, it struck me differently. Just to read it on the wall, I, I don't know, almost as if to say, what? Like, I mean, I knew it was common knowledge, but it, it, it stung a little harder as I was reading the information on the wall about, you know, the European trade and how they, you know, how it began, how, how it began. And, uh, but it made me think, I started spiraling. I just started thinking about, okay, why, 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 when we, we, we know some of the things, well, all of the things that we do know, do we do the things that we do? Why is there a disconnect with us between us? Why are, are we not educating one another better and more? Uh, but in any event, like I said, I was spiraling, but you're here <laughs> to talk with us about uh, Juneteenth and to share with us some of the little known facts. So I digress. Well, you know, when you say why, I think it's important to understand that the enslavers did not intend for us ever to get free. And so they created a system that was designed to enslave us forever, to keep us ignorant forever, even after emancipation, the goal was to limit the information we 
we were given so that we would live in service to those same Europeans throughout the rest of our lives, which if you look at it, that's what we do. Most of us work for European companies and make them rich through our brilliance. Most of us have mm -hmm. to go to them, myself included, in order to even get certified, in order to do psychology, I must go to a European group to get permission to accept insurance. We are still under their control, even though we don't realize it. And then when we go to their school systems, and it, I say theirs, because they decide what the curriculum will entail. And certainly, mm -hmm. as I mentioned earlier, that particular governor who is working very hard to prevent all schools throughout the nation, to prevent them from teaching true black history, because you can teach black history and tell lies, which is mm -hmm. what they've been doing, or you can tell the truth and that includes the atrocities committed by Europeans against Blacks. Because we seldom hear that information because if we heard it, we would then understand that these things, murdering Blacks is not new. Uh, understanding the origin of many things, including the police force as mm -hmm. slave catchers, so-called, and slavers sending people out to go capture black people who ran away from enslavement. And so that mentality is maintained in many police departments. Obviously it's not consistent with all police officers, mm -hmm. but we need to understand that there is a culture that was created psychologically that black people don't matter, that we're not as valuable, which means when a little black child is missing, nobody reports that on major news. But when a Caucasian child is missing, it hits the major news. We need to understand that we have to teach our own people at home, just as our cousins, the Jewish um, people do. Um, we cannot afford mm -hmm. to believe that people who have oppressed us will suddenly want us to have accurate information so we can free our minds, which will obviously free our bodies to do the right thing for black people. Because ultimately we need to support each other. We need to support black men. We need to support black women. We need to support black families. We need to support black culture. But many black people have been taught to reject Juneteenth, Kwanzaa, anything black. And let me just share with people that the people, the majority of the people who were kidnapped from Africa, forced into enslavement, were Muslims. Although many people don't know Christianity, the concept of one God was first brought to the world by Blacks. We were the first to embrace that concept of one creator, not Europeans. It, and it wasn't until the Nazian conference that it was changed. So we need to understand that there are a lot of things we don't know that we haven't been taught and it's intentional, which is mm -hmm. why we must decide to read on our own things that other people are not telling us to read. Although I do encourage people to read books such as, you know, what they never taught you in history. Uh, books like the first Americans were Africans. These are books that we can read on our own and share with Mm -hmm. our families, but we need to set aside time to learn it, first of all, ourselves as adults, and then to teach it to our children, which is why we need to have rites of passage programs that work not just with children, but with adults as well. We have to commit to it. And I would love to see the churches doing that. Mm. You know, as you say that, and you're absolutely right. I, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. But I, I'm curious to know, um, what your thoughts are about how we got away from it, what I believe. So here, here's my thought. And I'm thinking of the information that is out there available to us. And I'm thinking about how uh, we used to have a closer knit. I was, and again, and I'm all of these thoughts, I, like I said, I was spiraling when I was in the museum and I'm looking at all of the uh, 
all of the allies in the different states, um, the, black and white, but they were listed. And I'm thinking like we were, there was a, a there was a closeness. There was, a, there was a, a, an attachment that we had to one another. It, 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 back then that I, we don't have now. And I think about how like we created like, um, like, like different, like, well, for number one, the um, Underground Railroad, because I mean, we didn't have the communication back then that we do nowadays. We, like I said, there was a closeness, there was a, a camaraderie, there was an attachment. We, you know, we loved one another more and we, we wanted freedom. So we were trying to save each other and one another. Um, even like I think about the, and this is a, a stretch, but the like the green book talking about the different places that we could go. Like I ordered a copy because I wanted to feel that. I wanted to to see it and feel it. And I think about how we are so far from that closeness because to me, that was just us protecting us. That was, you know, that was us looking out for us. And we don't have that now. Mm -hmm. Like how I, I'm curious to know how you feel. We got so far away from that. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly media plays a major role in what has happened to us and what continues to happen along with the educational system. So from the cradle to the grave, we're taught that black people are not valuable, that black people are no good. We're taught, and this comes from slavery, that light skin are better Light-skinned people are better than dark-skinned people. And that's that divide and conquer. Some people talk about the uh, Willie Lynch letter and how uh, Lynch was talking to other enslavers and talking about how do you control Black people? And what they talked about was you divide and conquer, the old from the young, the light from the dark, the house from the field, and the educated from the uneducated in our cases now. Um, and they usually limited education even then to the offsprings of the enslaver, which is how Spellman and I believe Morehouse got started, was they were the schools for the enslavers' offsprings. So you had the lighter skinned black people who went to a school based on the fact that the enslaver had the money to get their children educated. So we'll see other people who have those opportunities based on them being the offspring and not looking as black mm -hmm. as, you know, perhaps the, the mom or uh, of that particular offspring, because it was primarily Caucasian males raping black women mm -hmm. and their offspring would be given opportunities. Like uh, the first chemical engineer, Norbert Rilieu, who created white sugar, he mm -hmm. was the offspring of his enslaver. And because he was light skinned with curly hair, et cetera, he sent him off to France to study and he became a chemical engineer, the first chemical engineer. So we see and we still know this happens now that light skinned people get benefits that dark skinned people don't get even among black people because we've been taught that black is not good. And that impacts our relationships because you look at the media, you look at the videos, you see light skinned women dancing around with long hair with dark skinned men. The idea is that they need more cream in their coffee. And we need to learn that we need more coffee in our coffee. And that being black, being dark skinned is valuable. It's important. The more melanin you have, the more strength you have in your body, which we are not being taught about. It can protect you from diseases because certainly nobody is under more assault than black people. And yet I saw it in my own father who's dark skinned. I'm, I'm one of those people who has a, a light skinned mom and a dark skinned dad, which is very common because dark skinned people tend to seek out light skinned people in order to what? To have pretty babies, because mm. we've been taught that dark skinned babies, tightly curled hair, full lips and broad noses are not attractive, that it's actually ugly, which if we went back in time prior to enslavement, we would find out that that was never the standard of beauty. The standard of beauty was full lips, black skin, flat noses and tightly curled hair. But over the past 500 years since enslavement, those people who were in power define the beauty standard as looking like them. It's mm. great for them 
but it is not accurate for most of us. Now, obviously, mm. we've got those who can pass, and many of our family members may have passed. But that's because opportunities are given to light-skinned people and people who are Caucasian that are not given to Blacks. So which true. is why we need to have Black businesses supporting Black people. That doesn't mean mm. we turn away business from Caucasians, but we must start circulating our dollars among our own people. That's how we become strong. That's how our children no longer engage in violence because they know they can get jobs from us. They can make fair wages. They can have a support system that's in place like we see among our Asian cousins. Mm. So we need to change what we do because it's very difficult for dark skinned women to even partner because black men are talking about, they want somebody light. Like, well, yeah. Uh. On that note, family, listen, what we're going to do, we're going to take just a short break, but stay with us because the con conversation will continue when we come back. Stay with us. Philadelphia, does it seem harder these days to get by? Well, there's one way to make keeping up a little easier and it's right at your fingertips. The Philadelphia Water Department cares about your access to one of life's daily essentials. So get help with your water bill. Visit philagov slash water bill help today and apply for one of the assistance programs with options for low income and senior customers and those with special hardships. Even if you haven't qualified before, you may be able to get help now. So head to philagov slash water bill help to learn more. In honor of Black Music Month and the 50th anniversary of hip hop, this is Black Academics. Give me a beat! The thing that frightened people about hip hop was that they heard people enjoying the rhythm for rhythm's sake. Hip hop lives in the world, not in the world of music. That's why it's so revolutionary. That's a quote from legendary drummer Max Roach. Before we dive into hip hop's 50 year history, we need to understand its foundation. The roots of hip hop, like many other musical genres, are planted in the soil of African rhythms and oral traditions. According to ContemporaryAfricanArt.com, in Africa, drums hold a deeper symbolic and historical significance. They herald political and social events. They are used as an alarm or call to arms, stirring up emotion for battle and war. Drums are about communication. For centuries, the talking drums were a primary source of communication between tribes used to transmit messages, sometimes across great distances. When Africans were enslaved in America, the drum continued to be an important form of communication across great distances. These rhythms still speak to us today. They play the music. This time they play the lyrics. Legendary drummer Max Roach. So the term rap music is not applicable to where they are because they deal with the spoken word. The fact that they have that rhythm going on attracts people so everybody is now become part of the dance community. So somebody said it's rap music. But actually, it's the, it's the art of the spoken word. It's what they are dealing with. And the stories they tell, they talk about their life in our community today. This Black Music Month vignette was brought to you by the NAA Male Wellness Agency, WXBN Artists to Watch podcast, PICO, the Pennsylvania Lottery, Keystone First, Posigen, and Comcast. Yeah! Celebrating 20 years of progressive Black talk media. We're bringing joy and power to the people. This is WURD, 900 AM and 96.1 FM, Philadelphia. Streaming online at wordradio.com and the Word Radio app. Something, and don't you ever forget it. Success is nothing without someone you love to share it with. You're listening to Love and Life with Carol Riddick on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Well, hello there, family. Welcome back. Welcome to the top of the second hour of Love and Life right here on WURD. 
progressive black talk media on air and online at wordradio.com. We are talking with none other than Dr. Ayo Maria Gooden, and we are talking about Juneteenth. We are talking about some of the little known facts about Juneteenth and about our history. And we are inviting you to join the conversation. You can do so uh, by commenting on our socials, or you can also call us. And you can do that by calling 215-634-8065, or you can call us toll free at 1-866-361-0900. Earlier, I was asking you all what you did to celebrate Juneteenth. I'm really curious to know, did anybody start any new traditions? I really want to know. I want to know what you did. And for the fathers, I'm still interested in knowing how you were celebrated on Father's Day. I pray that you were. Um, I really do. I really do. And I'm curious to know in what ways that you were. I did share with you that one of our family members shared with us that he spent the day with his grandkids and they had taco salad, (laughs) which I love. I just love that. (laughs) Thank you, Nasir, again, for sharing that. But again, going back to Dr. Gooden, we're talking about some good stuff here. Good stuff here. Little known facts. Dr. Gooden, I turn it over to you. Well, thank you again. I would suggest that, you know, people don't believe anything I say check it out. Never believe somebody without investigating. And certainly I could be wrong about things. And that's why it's always best to check things out. But as we check things out, we need to make sure we use some resources that are not traditional resources, because if the story turns out to be the same, don't be surprised. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, I might've mentioned that when we talk about history, History can be changed by the person who writes the history, as we know, the story Mm -hmm. of the the lion and the boy who asked the father, why, if the lion is the king of the jungle, is he always losing to the hunter? Mm. And the dad said, when the lion learns to write, it would be a different story. So we need to understand that There are lies that have been told, and I I like pointing out the quick and easy one, where we're taught in school that there are seven continents, (laughs) which is a lie, because they tell us that Europe is a continent. It is not a continent. Europe is part of Asia. Look up what a continent is. But the reality is, is that when people feel inadequate, when they do not feel capable of standing at the same level as another person, they will make things up. Okay. We frequently see this with narcissistic behaviors in people. And it's no exception in this instance, because Europeans are the only group that do not have a continent of their own. And so what they've done is they've claimed part of Asia as being Europe. And Europe is supposed to be a continent, which it is not. And in fact, if you were to say it's not a continent, you would get it wrong on your test as a child. And you would be subjected to a great deal of harassment from your teacher. Um, During uh, my son's developmental years, uh, when I sent him to school initially, uh, he was sent home with an F for not telling the story of how the pilgrims sat down in peace and ate with the Native Americans. And I had told him the truth. And so he didn't want to make his teacher and the other students feel badly. So he wouldn't write anything rather than lie. And I had to take him back to school and tell the teacher that he was trying to protect their feelings. And she informed me that if he didn't do what she told him to do, he'd get another F. So I informed them that my son would not be coming back to school and he was homeschooled from first grade until eighth grade. And he went on to earn a degree from Lincoln University in physics. Mm. So needless to say, sometimes it is best to remove children from systems that don't love them. Mm. And certainly our school systems 
will attack our children without us knowing it, as was happening to my son. So when we look at the extent to which Black people are under siege, we don't always understand it. Many parents send their children, their Black children, to private schools because they think those private schools will provide them with a better education. But what it also does is it alienates Black children from Black people because that's what they're being taught in those systems. They don't want to be Black. They want to fit in with the Caucasians. They want to have straight hair and light skin and, and thin lips and a pointed nose. And if they can't, then they want to marry somebody who does and have babies by them in an effort to be accepted by the people who are oppressing them. And that's mm. unhealthy. It's very unhealthy. We should want to be Black. We should want to have Black babies. But we have been trained to reject being Black. Black holidays are no good. We will embrace any European holiday um, not just the 4th of July, but if we look at holidays such as Washington, President's Day, when we look at Washington, who was supposed to never tell a lie, he was also a rapist. He was an enslaver. He had enslaved people who he sexually took advantage of whenever he wanted. And yet we see him as a hero. And he didn't have just one slave. He had many slaves. Thomas Jefferson, we can go through the list. I think there was only 13 people who signed the Declaration of Independence who did not own slaves. And even though you didn't own them, it doesn't mean that you didn't have the right to abuse them. You did legally. You could abuse any black person. You could kill any black person mm -hmm. and you would never be charged with any crime, including what is that? I think it's a hundred and uh, two years now anniversary for Black Wall Street when yeah. Black people in what's, you know, we call it um, Tulsa, Oklahoma, but it was Greenwood, were bombed by Caucasians who envied the wealth of that city. It was all Black. They were millionaires. They owned their own airports. They owned their own banks, schools. The children went to school wearing ties and suits. And because there were so many poor Caucasians surrounding them, they decided to bomb them. And unfortunately, a piece of what happens is that some of those statistics get changed so that you'll read many times that there were maybe about 300 people who died who were Black when it was closer to about 3,000 Black people who died and over 6,000 who were displaced. And because they changed what it was called, they called it a riot, it prevented the Black people from getting their insurance policies filled to go mm -hmm. back and rebuild their businesses that were burned down, their homes that were burned down. And certainly they could never restore the lives that were taken in that horrible massacre of Black people. Indeed. But when we learn these history facts, it reminds us of the atrocities that have been committed against us. And those are only, that's just one city. I mean, you can talk about Rosewood and there's so many other places where Caucasians had the right to murder us. We got locked up for trying to protect ourselves and mm -hmm. no Caucasian was ever arrested for any of those murders. It mm. the police departments, um, it, it included private citizens. Anybody had a license to kill us just as they do today. And if black people are not aware of this, and if we don't protect our rights, then the things that happened in the past, as we can see, will be repeated in the present. Family. Oh, family. Listen, if you've just joined us, you're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. Um, some of our family members are joining us on our socials. Brother Joey Dixon writes, peace, enjoy this day. One love and jazz to you. Uh, Miss Rosalind, Miss Rosalind Allen writes, good evening. Uh, Caroline producer, Kayla J, guest, Miss Sarah Lomax family, word family. It's always an honor and a privilege. Peace and love to everyone and blessings. I want to take this moment to go to our phone lines. I believe um, some of our family members are waiting to join the conversation. Are you still there by any chance? 
I am. Good evening to you. Good evening. I, I can uh, I can jingle and clap with my hands because I have two bangles instead of one. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you hear that, Dr. Gooden? Yes, I heard that reference to my book. Thank you very much for jingling. <laughs> and, and, and if I get shingles, I am definitely coming to get your product. Definitely. <laughs> or, 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 or any kind of... Um, any kind of um, malady that may involve or be around my, my, my face or mouth. But anyway, I'm a big fan uh, of the Goodens, and uh, I'd like her to comment, uh, elaborate on the common denominator, uh, common, common denominator, uh, should I say, uh, material cultural things like red, red drinks and red um, potato salad. And I'd like to also ask, is it better to commemorate or to celebrate June t- teeth? Uh, mm, mm. Good question. Wow. Awesome questions. L- let me start off with your first one about red. I'm, I'm guilty. I love red things. Uh, unfortunately, they have fought me back. Um, I'm allergic to red dye, which is why I now wear glasses, because I ate um, some chocolate covered cherries And those things, the dye makes my face swell up. And as a result, it has damaged my vision. So um, I think there's something very psychological about the color red. Red is a very fiery, passionate, active color. And it actually stimulates our desire to eat. But people also choose red as a color to symbolize their anger. So we'll see people who wear red who may have some deep-seated anger that they haven't been able to express. Mm -hmm. So red is one of those colors, and it stands out, obviously. You know, I thought you were going to ask me about red-bottom shoes, and I was going to tell (laughs) tell people, listen, you need to stop with the designer things, because unless they're Black designers, we are making other people rich and we are making ourselves poor. We need to identify Black people who are designers or sponsor our young people who can sew and who can make music and who can make art and use them and pay them, help them to spiral up instead of spiraling down. So Mm. I thought that's where you were going, but you didn't. So I had to bring it in anyway. But (laughs) that's my answer about red. Um, commemorate or celebrate. And I think that's a good point. We can celebrate the fact that we are no longer physically enslaved as we were during enslavement. But to commemorate means to really remember the experience. It means to acknowledge the experience and why that occurred and how we can avoid that repeating itself by working together as family, as the WURD family does. And that's exactly what we need are more WURD programs like Carol Riddick's show, because we have to share the information. We have to get it out there. And the truth is you're not going to get what you need from non-Black sources. 999 times out of a thousand, you won't. Once in a while, you will. So a piece of what we have to do is use this time to learn our history, to share our history, to build Black businesses, to support Black businesses. So I would say, did you spend any money with anybody Black? And why not do that all week long and all throughout your life? Seek out Black businesses and support them. And then I would also say, We need to enforce teaching ourselves first Black history because we haven't been taught most of us, except what we did find is that in the South, during my era, a lot of Black teachers were teaching Black children their history. But then when they replaced those Black teachers with non-Black teachers, that stopped Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. what they learned was that too many Black children were succeeding with strong Mm. black teachers. So they've just about eliminated them everywhere, including in black institutions of higher education. I don't call them historically black. I call them black 
colleges and universities because the historical title tells us what their plan is, which is to eliminate the black people in those institutions and replace them with Caucasian, Caucasian professors, Caucasian mm -hmm. administrators, and Caucasian students who will take advantage of the grants such as the Bond Hill Scholarship at Lincoln University, which allows you to go to law school, dental school, medical school, podiatry, and a bunch of other schools free after you graduate from Lincoln, and you can go to Pitt, Penn, Temple, or Drexel free. They're not going to tell you about that, but they will take advantage of it when they get there. Mm. Oh, once again, Dr. Gooden, thank you. I want to go to our socials for just a moment before we go back to the phone lines. Uh, Phyllis, Miss Phyllis Williams is joining us as well. She writes, good evening, Carol, Kayla J, Word Family, and everyone. Enjoy your evening and be safe. Miss Ro Rosalind follows up by stating that her grandmother's house was always painted red. Um, red is 80 years old and is standing, still standing. She writes, that was to protect us. Mm. That was what she writes. Mm. Uh, I want to take our next family member who is waiting for us on the phone lines. Are you still there by any chance? Yes. Are you still there? I sure am. I sure am waiting to talk with yeah, you. It's a great show. I'm really enjoying it. Thank and I'm you. I'm really enjoying this topic at this time in our history. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I admire you all knowledge and courage. Once mm -hmm. again, let me make this plain. This is a quote that has withstood the test of time. In the slave, who have a chance to write it down, I said it before, they should write this quote down. The process of understanding or perceiving a common evil has put many people into a situation of the utmost danger. Mm. That quote simply means the masses of human beings that were exterminated in the past, they never saw extermination coming. Mm. Saw themselves mm. being murdered, being treated unfairly, being treated cruel. But they had no idea that the people that was doing these things to them had plans to eventually exterminate them. Mm. This is the so called Black Negro is right today here in these wildernesses of North America. We are being set up for extermination. That's why they letting all these people in here. Some of these people they're letting in here, these people are assassins. They're mercenaries, killers. The guns is already here waiting on them. Mm. Anything jump off in this country, guess who's going to be up on the bottom of the totem pole? I don't need mm. to kill you. They all going to team up against us hmm? because they know we are the pride. We are the beautiful people. We are the kings and queens. And now they're going to want to do away with us. I have a question. I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I thought you were paused. From, from whom did the quote come? I, I did write it down, but I'm curious to know from whom. Or from well, I'm, not, I'm not sure of that, ma'am. Okay. Okay. But that quote has withstood the test of time. And we're not going to be the last one to be exterminated. Uh, So-called Negroes are under attack now in Canada. You hear news stories. Because they're letting you know when this go down here, you can run to Canada if you want to. But they waiting mm -hmm. on you there too. But I still would suggest if you can make it to Canada, try to get there and uh, ask for political asylum. Oh. Oh, wow. My, a lot of our great leaders don't get this wrong. But the great Marcus Garvey had the only answer and solution to our enslavement in these wildernesses of North America. 
Garvey said in the 1920s, we had to go back home and mm. we bring Africa for us and the Africans. Mm. Garvey said, if we did not do that, the white man was going to exterminate us here and then we were going to exterminate the Africans. Mm. It's just going down just like Garvey said. Now, they sent a Negro to assassinate Garvey in his office in New York. Garvey looked up. He lived. The mm. Negro they sent to assassinate Garvey, when they picked the Negro up and sent him to jail, this Negro uh, sort of hanged himself. He Africa, hanged himself in his cell? Yeah, in his cell. Okay. Africa is as divided today as they have been since both got there. Mm. The president of Ghana, the president of Nigeria, they don't even speak. They're not even on speaking terms. Why is that? Why, why aren't they, where the United States well, of Africa? One of the questions I asked Brother X, I'm, I'm sorry to interject. I'm terribly okay. sorry because we, we have to take a, a commercial break at this time. But that was one of the questions I asked, how we have such so much of a disconnect. But family, listen, the conversation is continuing. So stay with us because we will be right back. Coming up at Punchline Philly, playing to laugh with Torre, celebrating 30 years of laughter, Langston Kerman, Godfrey, Rodman, Atheon Crockett, Ali Sadiq, and more. Plus, keep the party going all summer long at Punchline's Trap R&B Brunch. Get tickets and full event info at punchlinephilly.com. I'm Carol Riddick, the host of Love and Life. And guess what, family? I will be live. That's right. I can speak with you about the real facts and honest opinions on dating, sexual health, casual and committed relationships. Join me Monday through Thursday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. The conversations will be served on a judgment-free platter and seasoned with unapologetic realness. So join me Monday through Thursday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Need a minute, take a breath, and breathe in positivity. Here are words of joy and empowerment from Word Radio. To Black Women by Gwendolyn Brooks. Sisters, where there is cold silence, no hallelujahs, no hurrahs at all, no handshakes, no neon red or blue, no smiling faces prevail. Prevail across the editors of the world who are obsessed, self-honeying, and self-crowned in the seduced arena. It has been a hard trudge with fainting, bandaging, and death. There have been startling confrontations. There have been tramplings. Tramplings of monarchs and of other men. But there remain large countries in your eyes, shrewd sun, a civil balance, the listening secrets, and you create and train your flowers still. I'm Delilah Wilson-Scott. This joy and empowerment vignette was brought to you by Comcast. You're listening to Love and Life with Carol Riddick on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Well, hello there, family. We are back. You are tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. That's wurdradio.com. Um, I just want to take a moment to share that Ms. Rosalind writes, uh, Mr. X, that was Brother X that was talking with us just before the break. And she says, happy Father's Day to you and all of the fathers. And may you have many, 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 many more. Love you unconditionally. Keep it coming. Wisdom of knowledge. Um, family, you too can join the conversation. You can do so by commenting on our socials or you can call us. And you can do that by dialing 215-634-8065 or you can call us toll free 
at 1-866-361-0900. I believe one of our family members has been waiting to talk with us. I'm curious to know, are you still there by any chance? This is Rick calling you long distance from Germany, sister. Hello, brother Rick. How are you? Good evening, Rick. And hello to Dr. Gooden. How are you? I remember you. <laughs> I I would like to ask you, doctor, are you a psychologist or a psychiatrist? I am a clinical psychologist. Okay, and what is the difference between a clinical psychologist and a regular run-of-the-mill psychologist? <laughs> <laughs> well, clinical psychology is... Uh, basically considered the premier field in psychology because we're trained to do all of the other fields of psychology. So I can do organizational, I can do experimental, I can do child, adult, I can do social, I can do, um, I can do all the other fields. Um, and the other fields, many times people will specialize in just experimental psychology or just social psychology. So they're not able to do therapy. Um, or some people will uh, work in um, organizational industrial psychology and they can only work with organizations. Clinical psychology actually is more difficult to get into than medical school. They have fewer spots open and they really take us through the ringer in order to earn that degree. So we may go to school for 10 years when a physician might go to school for eight years. Um, but uh, a PhD is considered a higher degree than an MD degree. So um, that's the difference. Psychiatrists, of course, are people who go to um, undergrad four years, go to medical school, they get their MD, and then they have to have a specialty in mental illness. What medications to give for mental illness? We learn not just mental illness, we learn wellness and how do we help people to be healthier? Um, how to, for example, I don't play basketball anymore. I uh, used to in junior high, but I can help a basketball player play better basketball without getting on the court with them uh, or a football player play better football. I've never played football. Uh, so we work with wellness as well as with illness. And I've worked with the whole gamut from uh, people who are schizophrenic uh, to what I do now in my private practice. I primarily work with people who have trauma and I do um, EMDR to help them to relieve that trauma. Um, and I work with individuals and couples to help build healthy relationships, which is part of the Black Love Partners organization that I helped to co-found because that's the root of a lot of the problems we have. Okay, um, let me let me uh, take a shot at uh, answering a question I heard Miss Riddick ask, and she asked Brother X about his quote, and I sus I suspect I don't know, but I suspect that that quote is attributed to Doctor Francis Cress Welsing. Mm -hmm. Doctor okay. Francis Cress Welsing did some work at St. Elizabeth's Hospital in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. I spent some time at St. Elizabeth's Hospital, um, 1977, 78, 79, as an outpatient. Uh, I had a, a, a psychiatrist who I spoke to about the color red and seeing red when I got angry. Um, also, I would ask you, Dr. Gooden, what you know about MK Ultra? MK Ultra was a part of St. Elizabeth's history um, av after the Catholics had pretty much departed, and the professional doctors had come in to the to the campus. Um, what do you know about MK Ultra? Nothing. Mm. Mm. Could you could you could summarize you? what it is? Um, I it would it was um, M, the MK stands for mind control. Um, 
Okay. I know about my CIA so. was involved in experiments on patients there at St. Elizabeth without mm -hmm. the without even some of the professional doctors or the and Catholic priests who were doctors there treat, treatment personnel there without their knowledge. Yes. Um, uh -huh. I'm reading this. Uh, we have. It sounds like we have just a. a there's some technical difficulties, but I I did just read this, Rick. I just looked it up. It mm -hmm. it, uh, uh, it reads that it was an illegal human ex experimentation program. Mm. Uh, and I know that the American Psychological Association was part of it. They helped devise ways to torture people. Um, they've apologized for it, just like they've apologized for their racism as has the American Psychiatric Association. So uh, the book to read, if you wanna hear more about things like that would be uh, Medical Apartheid, uh, mm. Harriet Washington. And it's the atrocities that have been committed against people is terrible, whether they're in mental health institutions or low income neighborhoods, or um, whether they're, and certainly uh, people who've been incarcerated have always been used as guinea pigs by the government and by private businesses in order to test out their products. Mm, mm, mm. Brother Rick, did you, I'm, I'm not sure if you're still with us because I did hear that we were hearing some technical, we were having some technical difficulties. I want to make sure that you uh, hear me, did hear that. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I will, I will say that uh, I appreciate the book. I, I have a copy of Medical Apartheid, and uh, um, I will look that up as soon as I hang up. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, thank you. and thank you for, for telling me from uh, where the, the quote came as well. Thank you so much. Always, Brother Rick. Thank you. Thank you, family. Uh, listen, if... You have just joined us. You are tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. That's wurdradio.com. We are having a Juneteenth conversation, and you are invited. You are invited to the conversation. We're talking with Dr. Ayo Maria Gooden, and she is just sharing all kinds of gems with us. If you would like to contribute to the conversation, you can do so by commenting on our socials, or you can call us. The number to dial is 215-634-8065, or you can call us toll free at one 866 Three six one zero nine hundred. Oh my goodness, Doctor Io! All of the information that you always share with us, I always tell you, I'm I'm always grateful for every single gem that you share with us. But um, just processing, you know, I'm always processing everything that that you share I'm with us. Oh, you listen. I'm processing too. Oh my goodness. It's, it's constant, constant, you know, yes. uh, processing. And there's so much to process. It is. That's the thing about it. There's so much to process. And then as we talk about how this information relates to us, uh, the black man and the black woman and our relationships and uh, it, it, it's so, uh, and it's so deeply rooted. Yes. That's the thing. It's so deeply rooted, you, you yes. know, the, um, uh, uh, the the pain the 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 level of effort that has been put into our detachment it's just it just goes so far back and it's so deeply rooted but it's yeah. still there yes and you know black love partners which i co-founded was created because of the severe problems i have seen over the 50 years of my uh therapy experiences with people. Um, if we had healthy husbands and wives, then they would produce healthy children and mm. they would produce healthy neighborhoods and healthy communities. But unfortunately, we have been traumatized and we're the only group that people seem to want to pretend have not been traumatized and should not 
be um, given the support and help that we need. Instead, we're categorized as being bad, being criminals, being deficient. And all of these deficit models for Black people come out of the need of those people who have oppressed us to disguise the horrendous, horrific, horrible atrocities that have been committed against us. But, you know, there's a term called the Stockholm syndrome, where some people were held prisoners in a, mm -hmm. in a bank for about 100 hours. And as a result, those people who were held captive started to align themselves with their captors because they were afraid of being killed. And when they were released, finally, they were supporting their captors. So the same dynamic has happened to Black people. After 500 mm. years of being held captive by our oppressors, we've aligned ourselves with those individuals for fear that they will kill us. And literally they used to all the time. Now they still kill us. Um, they still do it, but they do it less frequently in public than they used to do it because they didn't have cameras before. And as a result, what we do is we protect them the way we were taught to protect them so that we're not supposed to say anything bad about them. We shouldn't identify their faults. It's okay for everybody to identify our faults as black people and to blame us for every horrible thing that happens, but they mm -hmm. minimize what they do so that when the mass shooters are Caucasian, we don't hear that Caucasians are bad. We hear that that one person had a problem, not his parents. His parents mm -hmm. had nothing to do with it. It was this one individual and he was distraught because something terrible had happened to him. Um, but when a black person does it, the black person is evil, their parents are evil, their neighborhood is evil, <laughs> and all black people are evil. And we have to understand that this is part of the propaganda that has been created from slavery to the present. It hasn't stopped. And their intent is to oh. justify doing what the caller was suggesting, extermination of a people. And they did the same thing with people of the Jewish faith. They started off doing a smear campaign about them so that when they decided to take them away and put them in the ovens and burn them up, everybody said, good, good riddance. Mm. They, mm. they were no good anyway. A lot of people don't realize that black people were also put in those ovens and that we hear about the 6 million people of the Jewish faith who were murdered by the Germans. We never hear about the hundreds of millions of black people who were murdered by the Germans. In fact, before they put people of the Jewish faith into those ovens, they practice on black people from about 1889 to 1945. And they killed hundreds of millions of black people in Africa and wiped out whole ethnic groups. People like King Leopold came into the Congo and wiped out hundreds of millions of black people. Mm. And in fact, there was a story of where the uh, soldiers were bragging at lunchtime how they had killed over 100,000 in one afternoon using Gatling guns, just shooting mm -hmm. them down. Uh, sometimes they would wrap them in barbed wire and kick them around until they died and other horrible things. And then you have people like Rhodes, Cecil B. Rhodes, Rhodes Scholar named after him, who went to South Africa and murdered hundreds of millions of Black people in South Africa. So we don't hear about them. So when we see the wealth in these other European countries, we don't realize that that wealth came from Africa, came from murdering Black people, stealing their land, stealing their resources, that even the telephones we use come from the minerals from Africa, that the second largest producer of oil, and I think they might be the largest producer, is Nigeria. And yet we don't see any Nigerian gas stations, but we'll see BP as though BP has mm -hmm. oil. They don't have oil. So we need to understand that we've been lied to. We've been told that Black people have nothing of value, and yet we're the originators. I mean, the first black engineer was Narmer Menes from Kemet or Egypt, and he actually changed the course of the Nile. And when the Nile rises to its highest level, it turns purple. 
And that's when they have their abundance of plants, which is where the color purple comes from as a royal color. It's associated with abundance. And actually, scientifically, purple is one of the hardest colors to reproduce. So it was restricted to people of royalty who could afford to make the color purple. So there's so many things we don't know that we need to know. And that's why learning Black history is so important. That's why we can't allow people to tell us that we can't learn about the critical race theory or anything else that has to do with Black history. And it should be taught by Blacks for everyone, not just for Blacks. Oh, that, mm, that's a, mm, agreed. Oh, family, listen. Uh, we are talking with Dr. Ayo Maria Gooden. We are talking about Juneteenth. We are talking about our history. We are talking about everything right now. But what we're going to do is take just a short commercial break. So stay with us because the conversation will continue when we come back. Word Radio Digital Tip of the Month with Stephanie Humphrey is brought to you by Comcast. When was the last time you cleaned your smartphone? If you can't remember, it might be time to give it and your other devices a little sprucing up. You don't necessarily need to buy expensive electronics wipes or other cleaners. An equal mix of isopropyl alcohol and water will do the trick. But make sure devices are turned off and unplugged before you start. Never spray any liquid directly onto any device. Slightly dampen a microfiber cloth and then use the cloth to clean the device. And don't forget that TV remote. It's one of the dirtiest gadgets in your home. Also, clean up the insides of your devices too by getting rid of old files or unused apps to free up hard drive space. Take a little time every so often to take care of your devices so they're always ready to go when you need them. Stay tuned to WURD for more tips and stay connected with us at wordradio.com. This is not a fad for us. We will not resume our regular programming when things die down. We're not black to help our bottom line or because it's politically correct. We're not joining a fight. Joining a fight. This has been our fight, our message, our people. Black lives have always mattered here. We are undeniably, indefatigably, unapologetically, permanently black. Talk Media. W-U-R-D. <laughs> Hello? Man, where are you? I thought you were coming. I can't. I'm in bed with the flu. <laughs> the flu? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Grandma's about to crowd, sir. Man, I'll call you back. Don't get stuck at home with the flu. A flu shot is safe, effective, and you can get it at the same time as your COVID-19 vaccine. A flu shot is the best way to prevent the flu and its potentially serious complications. Don't get flu FOMO. Learn more at GetMyFluShot.org. Brought to you by the AMA, CDC, and the Ad Council. Word family, it's that time again. Our special early bird membership drive. Hi, I'm Sarah Lomax, Word President and CEO. We need your support now more than ever, especially this year when we're celebrating our 20th anniversary. For the last two decades, WURD has been the only place in Philly where our people can speak and be heard in their own voice every day, all day long. Your membership support has allowed us to expand our programming, deepen our community engagement, and provide culturally relevant information across all of our platforms on air, online, on social media, and through community outreach events. If you're not a Forward member yet, please join or renew today at the discounted rate of $75. Visit us at wordradio.com slash early bird, or check us out in person when we'll be at the Juneteenth weekend celebrations on June 18th and 19th. For more information, go to wordradio.com slash early bird. Thanks so much. is love you're listening to love and life on wurd progressive black talk media i think i know Well, hello there, family. Welcome back. You are tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. 
www.wourdradio.com. That's W-U-R-D radio.com. We are talking with none other than Dr. Ayo Maria Gooden, and we're having a Juneteenth conversation as we celebrate June. Uh, I want to take a moment just to go to our socials to recognize some of the comments that have been made by our family members. Uh, Miss Rosalind writes, a mother, a grandmother, and a great grandmother. She writes, I'm 64 years old, I'm disabled, and I've been in and out of institutions for 19 years and yet worked all of my life. And people still want to label you by the grace of God. I was a label when my mother had me. You just don't win. Um, Tony Brown writes, never knew any black people in history that raped, murdered, and killed a whole town in America. But those white folks got the world thinking we are the bad guys. Oh, Mm. Harold Spriddle writes, I enjoy your guest. Please have her on more. You know what? From your lips to God's ears, because I keep asking her to, to come back and come back and come back. I keep inviting her. You see that I do. <laughs> uh, Miss Rosalind follows up with another conversation, uh, conversation and comment. She writes, so why is it that from kinder care on up to 12th grade, there are very few teachers that want to teach us our history. Uh, they, they, want to, uh, they don't want us to know what happened. They don't want us to know our culture across the world. She writes, it's sad. Um, Nasir writes, Sister Carol, the show is full of interesting info. Uh, from my trip to the knowledge uh, from Sister Goodman, um, and he's appreciative of that. I, I must say, family, th this conversation, this Juneteenth conversation is one that I feel is always a necessary one. I really, really do. I feel that it should continue all year long, quite honestly, because as I was saying to you all earlier, every single conversation that I have with Dr. Goodman, I learned something and I am on a quest for knowledge. I want to know more about our history, you know, and but that's what we do here on Love and Life. You know, we, we talk, we process, you know, and uh, we learn Hopefully, I know that I do. I'm hoping that you do too, you, you know, that we learn. And the point of it all is that we're doing it together. Mm -hmm. That is the part of it that makes me feel the best, that we're doing it together, that we're, we're sharing information with one another. We're sharing, we're educating one another. That makes me feel good because I tell you all the time, I don't know everything. I don't claim to know everything. Don't want to know everything, but I want to know a lot. I definitely do. I definitely do. Um, Ms. Rosalind also shares, Dr. Goodman, you are very intelligent. I'm so proud of you. You bring joy to my heart. Um, she says she, it's hard trying to find the right psychiatrist and therapist in one. Um, but she, she writes that she knows she's been dealing with it for 19 years, but God has kept her. Um, and keep up the great work, she writes. Thank you Thank for you. educating us. Thank you. Um, I, I would love, um, well, this is what I'm going to do because I'm looking at the time. I would like to know, Dr. Goodman, what is it that you would leave us with today? We, do, we still do have some time, but I want to allow you enough time to get it out. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, as I said, Black Love Partners is something I co-founded in order to address the issues that we as Black people have, the traumas that we have, and provide healthy information about how to be a healthy individual and how to have a healthy relationship. And if people want to know more, they I believe that my address this time is up on the screen. They can yes. reach me at Dr. Io at blacklovepartners.com. I also have some uh, literature that I'd be happy to share with people on holidays and some correct information versus some of the stories we've heard uh, and some of the black uh, holidays we can celebrate because we need to change what we do. It's important that we, as I've said over and over again, learn our history. That starts mm -hmm. with our family history. And I know that there's some tragic histories in our families, but we have to understand many of the things that happen to us are not our fault but they're our responsibility to do something about. So people who may be incarcerated, when we understand the system they're in, it was only by design that our people are being incarcerated. If our people had been nurtured and loved in their home and in their communities, which we don't have a community, then we wouldn't see the incarceration rates 
we wouldn't see it at all. Just like mm -hmm. in the Asian community, because they take care of their own, they spend their money with each other, they nurture each other. And so Black Love Partners is on a mission. We want to decrease those divorces and increase those marriages to Blacks because we need to love each other. We need to support Blacks. I love Black men. I'm married to a black man. I have two black sons. I love being black. But let me tell you, my transformation came when I started learning black history because I went through regular school mm -hmm. and I'm the first in my family to go to college, to graduate, get a degree. Neither one of my parents ever made it out of high school. So I understand that there are many roadblocks and that's what makes me love and admire black men so much because Black men are under attack. Mm -hmm. And I know that Black women are angry with some Black men because Black women don't make as much money as Black men, but that's not black the fault of Black men. That's the fault of Caucasian males who make the decisions about who gets paid what. And then we've been taught to emulate the Caucasian and the way they treat their women. And so the abuses continue until we learn our true African because even the Africans now have been trained to embrace a European perspective of how to treat women because mm. it used to be that black women were revered and black men were revered by black women. And that's the way it should be. We should revere each other. Black we men and black women need each other and we must respect and love and nurture and protect each other. And that's oh a piece God. of what Black Love Partners is doing. And we hope that you'll get involved. Dr. I, uh, Dr. Goodo, uh, Goodman, I'm combining both of you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good, yeah. Yes, Gooden, Gooden. I keep doing that. Dr. Gooden, yes. quick question for you. Is it a website or is it a YouTube address? Is it, is it, it is blacklovepartners.com. Is that correct? Yes, you can. At, that's the email address. So if you write to me there, I'll get the emails. Um, we're on YouTube. Um, and so you can make comments on our YouTube um, site. Your YouTube page. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, but right, right. So, you know, I can be reached and now I can be reached through you. You know how to reach me. Yes, yes, I, yes, yes, yes. I want to make sure our family members know and are fully aware. So you can, for those of you who are not, are unable to see this and are listening, you can email Dr. Gooden at Dr. Io, that's A-Y-O, at Black Love Partners, that's plural, dot com. Dr. Io at Black Love Partners partners.com. Um, I just want to take another moment to say that Ms. Viola, Ms. Viola Richburg Gray writes, hello, I have been listening. And she writes in capital letters, me too. I can only believe that to be with regard to loving black men. I do too. <laughs> I love the black man. I think I say it all the time. I tell you all the time, black <laughs> man, I love you. Miss <laughs> um, Rosalind, right? She's preaching. She is preaching. Uh, there's nothing like a black king. He's the head, uh, a black man. She, it, it, it's, it's really, really refreshing to me to just read all of your comments and to, to have you uh, contribute to the conversation and to participate. I cannot tell you how much it means to me because I tell you all the time. You know, listen. I tell you, I ask you to be good to you, but to be good to those around you. And I believe that the start of it is communicating and 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 uh, with one another. And that's what we do here. We, we talk it out. We talk it out. We talk it out. Um, so what I want to do right now, because I'm looking at the time, what I don't want to do, I should say. <laughs> but what I must do is begin to wrap up. But uh, family, please know that I will continue to invite Dr. Gooden um, to the conversation. I, I always enjoy her company. As you know, I tell you all the time, I love it when you come. So family, yes, I will continue to invite Dr. Gooden to come and spend some time with us to um, share some information with us and knowledge with us. I know I enjoy it. I do. I do. And as you know, uh, as we wrap up tonight's episode, I'm going to do what I always do. And that is extend my utmost gratitude to each and every one of you for your continued support 
of love and life. I, I just cannot express and have you understand what it means to have your support for this space right here because I love you and I want you to know that I love you. Okay. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. <laughs> Special thanks to our guest, Dr. Ayo Maria Gooden. Okay. <laughs> for sharing your time. I'm so sorry. For, uh, just to thank you as always. For just sharing your, your time, your your energy, your space, your your knowledge, and your attention um, with us, it's always greatly appreciated. And I do hope you will come back. I will hope you. Yes, I do hope you will continue to come will. back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Additional you. special thanks to our callers, uh, Brother Ron, Brother X, Brother Rick, Doctor Ford. Happy Father's Day to all of you. Uh, I, would be remiss if I did not say that. I'm terribly sorry. I did not say it while you were on the phone, but thank you for calling in. Um, special thanks to Miss Kayla J as always, always, always. And to Niall Jacks um, for all that you do. Family, in the words of Dr. Gooden, happy and healing Juneteenth. We are all in this together. I cannot say it enough. Okay. So be good to you, but be good to those around you. Have a great night and be sure to join me Monday through Thursday, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time for another edition of Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Have a good night, family. Good night. June is LGBTQIA Pride Month. Pride Month began as a way to honor the 1969 uprising in Manhattan. On June 28, 1969, the NYPD raided the Stonewall Inn 